Hi everyone, in this video we are going to learn about the life cycle of pteridophytes. The life cycle of pteridophytes starts from a single cell haploid structure called spore, which is released from the main plant body and is carried to a different location through wind. The single cell spore, on finding suitable conditions, preferably moist, cool and shady place, starts to germinate and divide by mitotic divisions and finally develops into the gametophyte of pteridophytes called prothallus. The prothallus is a small, inconspicuous and multicellular gametophyte having a dorsiventrally flat body. The cells of prothallus contains photosynthetic pigments and thus it is photosynthetic and capable of independent existence. Usually the prothallus develops into a heart shaped structure the anterior end of the prothallus has a notch and bears the female sex organs, archegonium, while the posterior end bears the male sex organs, anthridium. From the posterior end, many thread-like structures called rhizoid also arise to absorb water and minerals. The monoecious prothallus develops in homosporous species of pteridophytes, but in heterosporous species, Separate male and female gametophytes are produced, bearing anthridium and archegonium respectively. In monoecious prothallus, the anthridium and archegonium matures at different times to avoid self-fertilization. The anthridium produces long, motile and spirally coiled male gametes called antherozoids. These antherozoids reaches archegonium in response to the chemical signals secreted by the cells of archegonium. The gamete transfer in teratophytes is dependent on presence of water. As antherozoids reaches the archegonium, it fertilizes the female gamete egg, resulting in formation of zygote, which marks the beginning of the diploid phase. The zygote now divides by mitosis, resulting in formation of embryo, which matures into the diploid and the main plant body called sporophyte. Usually only a single sporophyte develops from a prothallus. The sporophyte is well developed and differentiated into true roots, stems and leaves and have the presence of vascular tissues, xylem and phloem. The stem is usually modified into underground rhizome showing horizontal growth. The lower surface of rhizome bears numerous adventitious roots for absorption of water and minerals, while the upper surface has leaves called fronds. Tadophytes can be categorized on the basis of their leaf size. The species having large size leaves are called macrophyllous, and the ones having small size leaves are referred as microphyllous. The leaf shows special type of development called circinate vernation and appears like a crozier during initial stages. In most of the pteridophytes, the leaves are modified to produce spores and hence called sporophylls. Each sporophyll develops numerous sori on the lower side. The sori has multiple sporangium having specialized cells for spore formation. These cells are spore mother cells as it divides by meiosis to produce haploid spores. In some species, the sporophylls may be compactly arranged to form cones or strobilus. In most of the pteridophytes, only a single type of spore is produced, that is, mostly pteridophytes are homosporous. But in some species, two different types of spores called microspores and megaspores, representing the male and the female spores, are produced. The spores formed are released, resulting in continuation of alternation of generation in pteridophytes. For more information and detail on this topic, you may refer to the article linked in the description section below. So that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, you can subscribe to get notified when I upload more videos like this.